In this video, we're going to try out the ThinkDAG 2 by ThinkCar. Stay tuned. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Random Fix. And I test a lot of different scan tools and app based scan tools like this. So, this is the ThinkDAG 2. And I recently reviewed the ThinkDAG 1. And there's a few minor differences that I want to show you guys before we jump in the vehicle. So let me go over that with you now. Now we have the ThinkDAG 2 and the ThinkDAG 1. I'll leave you guys the link to this review if you guys want to check that out at the end of the video and also in the video description box down below. So the major differences with the ThinkDAG 2 is going to be the fact that this is going to support more vehicles that are supported on CAN-FD. CAN-FD applies to vehicles such as newer GM vehicles around the year 2020. So if you guys own a GM vehicle, this might be really helpful for that. And I'll leave you guys an article about CAN-FD in the video description box down below. And this has Bluetooth 5.0. This has Bluetooth 4.2. This has a total of 12 languages. This has a total of 9 languages. This comes with a smaller package. So you should get the dongle just by itself. This comes with the case, the cable. A much bigger dongle you can see the size difference and the cable slips right into here and once you got the cable nice and snug we are ready to connect to the vehicle so let me show you how to quickly connect this to your vehicle in case you're new to this and then we'll try out some of the basic features and then we'll try out some of the activation tests and even try out some of the special functions such as programming this key here for my Dodge Caravan these devices are very easy to connect to your vehicle. You just slide them into place. They only go in one way. As soon as you connect the device, you will notice that you have a red power button. You'll get a green check mark for the vehicle and you'll get a blue light for the I.O. And now we can go ahead and use the app on the phone and we can scan the vehicle and do some pretty cool things. So let's try these out. And before we start scanning, you want to ensure your ignition is on. And you can verify that the ignition is on because the check engine light will be on and the motor is not running. And for the purposes of this video, I have thrown off an airbag light as well as I have a check engine light because I have a small evap leak. And we're going to see if this can go through and retrieve that data now. Now I have the device connected to the vehicle and I'm using the app. The app that you need to use is going to be the ThinkDAG Plus. This is on iOS, and I have tested the ThinkDAG one on Android as well, and it did work. So let's launch that. And we're going to do all system scan. The VIN was successfully scanned. I can do a health report, which we'll do now. PCN. So I went through and scanned the vehicles under 40 seconds. So this is pretty fast. And this is for that small EVAP leak. And we'll check the freeze frame data later. If you check on this little question mark at the top here, you can click on that and it will do a quick Google search for you. Yeah, and this is weird. It's doing a Google search on town. So it's got a bug or two, ABS. I had a battery in this vehicle that went dead. When your battery dies, just know that you're gonna get all kinds of fault codes. So I've already replaced the battery with the AGM battery. And one thing that I noticed on this scan tool right now, there's no voltage displayed on the screen. So you want to be very careful because if you're programming anything such as we'll do later on, like this key, you want to make sure your voltage is at least at 11.5. Your voltage is below that. You may want to stop and throw it on a battery charger. SRS, we have all these fault codes here. Body control module. Let's me know there's some things going on with the headlights. I have updated the headlights here to LEDs. So this is doing a great job of detecting everything. And I can quickly generate a PDF and share this with a client, a friend, and it only takes a few seconds. Since this is app-based, I highly recommend having internet. Some of the features will not work if you don't have internet. Just keep that in mind and I don't think you'll have an issue as it's on your phone. I'm gonna go view that freeze frame data to see what we get. Okay, so this is the freeze frame data for the P456. And here were the conditions when the check engine light got triggered. And so this could really help me figure out what's going on with my vehicle. But let's go back to the testing here. 
since we accessed the freeze frame data, now let's try to clear all the system codes. PCN, powertrain control module, no fault code. SRS, supplemental inflatable. Okay, so after that scan, everything looks normal. Let me start the vehicle. No check engine light and the uh, airbag light is gone. You can view that for yourself. And so far, so good. Let's choose system selection now. And we'll go through the power control module. And over here, we can get module information, read codes, clear codes, read the data streams here. And let's go through and choose everything here. Let me start the vehicle. So we're on the data streams and the information here is very responsive. There's really no lag. And this is one of the very few app-based scan tools that actually has some sort of graphing. So let's go to this injector pulse on cylinder one. Tap on the little graph. And yeah, this has a really nice refresh rate. The data looks very nice. I can also record this. So if I'm driving and I notice something, however, I need to focus on the road, I can record it and it's gonna make my job a lot easier of trying to figure out what's happening with the vehicle. Select actuation tests. We'll select the fuel injector here and see if we can actually toggle off the fuel injector. So if my car had a misfire and I thought it was a fuel injector on cylinder one and I didn't want to take everything apart, this might be really useful. Okay, that's not really working. Let's try f special functions. Let's go to the actuation tests and here's all the different actuation tests for the power control module. Special functions. We got a cam crank relearn. Let's try this exhaust phaser cleaning. Okay, you can see that the vehicle idle was going the vehicle idle was going up and down as this was doing the cleaning. We have electronic throttle relearn, quick learn, oil reset, system test. Here's all the different items I can test including the different gears on the transmission and here's all the different systems we can select we got the transmission ABS SRS system the body control module cabin compartment node and I'll just show you guys all of these and just know not every one of these applies to your vehicle for example I don't have a DVD player so this is not going to apply to my vehicle I don't have a sunroof, that's not going to apply here as well. And under special functions, we have oil reset, steering wheel angle, sensor reset, a battery match for BMWs and vehicles like that. I think Mini has that as well. Services for diesel vehicles and immobilizer keys. So let's go and try that out. I got myself a new key here. And with the right scan tool, guys, you can get these keys for very cheap. I got the key for my Toyota for under $45. I got this for less than $15. And let's see if it works. Brand new key. And we're going to try to program this. Let's see how good the directions are. And this is the weird thing about these ThinkDAC tools. Right here, it looks like there's no menu, that you have no option. But... You want to just select the item. So select it. And over here we can program ignition keys or key fob. Confirm. So the directions provided are pretty clear. I'll let you guys read that for yourself. Let's confirm. And this is where it's going to ask for the pin number and
and I actually need to get the pin number. I don't have the pin number. And I thought this way I'd give it to me, but we need to go and find that. We'll come back to this in a second. <laughs> Injector coating, adaptive front lighting system, instrument cluster correction, language change, and a compression test. Let's try this compression test. And that doesn't work. I really thought the ThinkDAG 2 was going to offer me something a little bit more than the ThinkDAG 1. And so far it's not looking like that. Let's go to OBD2 functions here and we'll try to read the inspection monitors since last cleared. So this is saying all my monitors are ready. And let me verify this to be true. I'm gonna use a regular OBD2 reader. If you like this angle in my face, make sure you guys give the video a thumbs up as I'm really trying here. So this is my regular OBD2 reader. You'll notice that all the monitors are ready, but it says DTC in red. And that is probably a permanent code. So I need to figure out what that is. Even though my check engine light is off, I still have that code stored in here. So that's gonna be a little tricky. This might be a permanent code. I need to do some additional investigation, but this is working as designed. I just wish it actually showed that code as well. So all the monitors are ready. So again, I can go ahead and record and I can also do a report here. Let's try reading the data streams here on the OBD2 side. Again, we'll select all. No lag. And it now it shows that P456 code. And this is showing that the code is current, but my check engine light is not on and it's not pending. Okay, so we will have to figure this out. I'm gonna try clearing this on the OBD2 side. I'm gonna read it again. Now the file codes are gone. Let me go and check it with this now again to see if that actually got rid of that P456. Now that I actually cleared it on the OBD2 side, you can see that the DTC has disappeared, but all my monitor data has since been cleared as well. So this is making a lot more sense as I think that was a current code and the vehicle either needed to confirm that the code was gonna go get triggered again or it was gonna go and erase it itself. So far, the ThinkDAG 2 is working as designed. And now let's go through maintenance functions. And here's all the maintenance functions that are available. So we have a total of six, 12, and Three more, so we have a total of 15 functions available. So let's try the immobilizer here. And I'm hoping that I will be able to do this key, guys. It should be here. Sometimes you just gotta go find it. And this is why it's really important to have internet while you do this on these devices. Let's try that again. Now I think I'm in the right section here. So my year is enlisted here. I have a 2014, let me try it. The weird thing is, I remember this actually being an option on the ThinkDAG 1, and that's when I ordered the key. But this unit came in from ThinkCar, and I do want to thank them for sending me this, but I'm a little disappointed because I really wanted to program this key. Let me actually grab the ThinkDAG 1. Let's try some active tests here on the body control module. And we'll go to door locks. Okay, that worked. All doors lock. Okay, that works. So look at all the different things you can do here besides controlling individual motors. If you're having an issue with the headlight, you can control individual lights, turn on power, rear stop lights, reverse lights, windshield washer front. Let's go ahead and turn that on. And there you guys go. You can see that it's working. And I've been playing around with this. This also has the ability to customize different features, change the headlight delay time. So currently I have the headlights set to zero seconds when I get in and out of the car. But if you wanted to go ahead and extend that time out, you can come through here and change it on the spot. So I can change it 30 seconds, confirm it, 
You could also go through and change the tire size on the vehicle. So if we go through right here, program tire size, and it gives me a selection of different tires I can change to. And that is pretty easy to do. So at the end of the video, I am going to give this a score of 1 to 10. And I'll give you guys my honest feedback about this so you guys can make a decision for yourself. But I was really hoping for the ski to work. Now I know I can go ahead and grab a different scan tool and grab the pin number. And I might even do that just to go ahead and get the ski to work. But it would be really nice if the ThinkDAG 2 would get me the identification number as the other scan tools are able to do this. So in order to program the key, this is the menu we needed right here. We need to be able to read this pin code. And that is my pin code right there underneath my finger. And if we had that pin code, I can actually program the key. So this pretty much wraps up my in-car testing of the ThinkDAG 2. Let's go ahead over to the bench so I can give this a random fix tool grade. So you guys can decide for yourself if this is a tool that you should consider buying. Stay tuned. I am trying out my new gimbal here to see how well it does. So if you guys are enjoying this experience and the content, make sure you guys give the video a thumbs up. Now that we're back at the bench, let's give this a final recap so you guys can go ahead and decide this for yourself. So as you guys witnessed, I was not able to program the key, even though I really tried. And I did find another scan tool, an actual scan tool that can do it. So it is not the vehicle. It's more of the limitations of an app-based scan tool like this. And even though I gave the previous ThinkCard DAG an 8 out of 10, even though this can support 120 plus cars, it's got bi-directional controls, it can potentially code an ECU, and it has 15 different resets, the auto bin does work, and it's got the CAN FD support. I'm going to go ahead and give the ThinkDAG 2 a 7 out of 10. Now I'll leave you guys a link to the product at the end of the video. So if you guys want to go ahead and check it out, check it out. If I find any special coupon codes, I will post some down below as well for you guys. If you have any questions about scan tools or app-based scan tools like this, please don't hesitate to comment down below. If there's anything I missed on this video, please let me know what it was, and I'll try to get it for you in a future video. And in case you were curious why I gave the ThinkTag 2 a lower score than the ThinkTag 1, well, it's the increase in price versus what you're getting and for me since i don't own a general motors vehicle i did not see any difference and the number of languages it supports had no concern to me and i did not notice any difference between the bluetooth 4.2 and the new bluetooth 5.0 but i really do think it's a good scan tool alternative for some people that like convenience and portability as it is a very small package I'll leave you guys some videos here at the end. You guys can go ahead and check out if you guys want to learn more about scan tools. And we'll see you on the next one. Thanks again.